Hello everyone, Tom, Joy and Route. Today I thought we'd take a look at weather awareness. As a nomad traveling around the country, or even if you're not a nomad or just taking trips in your RV, maybe even just taking a trip, weather awareness is kind of important, can be more important in certain circumstances than others. I think traveling in an RV is one of those places where weather awareness is key. Uh, first of all, I'll apologize for the weird uh, webcam situation here. Um, I am just on a um, on my little dash um, clip <laughs> that I usually uh, clip this DJI action camera onto my dash with. And it's just sitting here in front of my keyboard, kind of looking up at me. It's probably never a good look, but... We'll have to run with it because I couldn't figure out any uh, better way to actually do this. So, anywho, uh, let's get on with the show here. So, what you're seeing here on the screen is, and I'd like to introduce you to, if you've not seen it before, a website and an app uh, and a service known as Windy. You can find Windy at windy.com. I am a premium member of windy.com, uh, so full disclosure on that. And it does get me a few extra features that are kind of important to me, and I don't mind paying the approximately $19 a year uh, to have access to those features. For example, one-hour forecasts instead of uh, every three-hour updates on the forecast. So here we are with a, a global United States view of the weather and I just so happen to have the satellite view turned on. It is uh, just passing 11 a.m. on Monday the 25th of March. My goal here in taking a look at the weather is to look into what I'm going to be driving through in order to get back to Wisconsin. So recently you probably saw my um, U.S. Space and Rocket Center video. Again, sorry for the video problems with that one. But um, that signaled kind of the end of my exploration in this, you know, part of my nomadic journey. I need to go back to Wisconsin. Uh, I've got some business to attend to there. And so... Uh, I'll be uh, on a return uh, path to Wisconsin. And uh, so I'm going to zoom in here just a little bit, show you where I am presently and where I'm going. So right now I am in Kentucky, just south of the Indiana border in a town called Henderson. And in particular, I'm in a a uh, state park known as, uh, uh, if I can zoom in on it, we could probably read it, uh, the um, John James Audubon State Park. And um, if I click on uh, that, uh, Wendy will provide for me a weather strip that tells me what's going on with the weather. In combination with uh, this information, I'm prob more likely to be looking at the maps than, uh, than this because here the, the uh, weather strip at the bottom of the screen is really just showing me uh, what's going on in Henderson, Kentucky, which is uh, close to where uh, this um, state park is located. And I need to uh, see more of what's going on between here and Wisconsin. Uh, so the map is a little bit better for that. But just uh, in order to introduce you to the weather strip here at the bottom of the screen, we'll go from the top of the bottom. You can see each day, uh, we've got Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday showing, and I can scroll this back and forth just by dragging it with my mouse. There is a vertical dashed line right along here that tells you where we are in time on this day, Monday the 25th. We're approaching 11 a.m. 
or just passing 11 a.m. actually. So from top to bottom then again day and then we have the hour and I do have the one hour forecast selected. I can switch off of the one hour forecast and you can see that this goes to an every three hour update model. Again, this is something that uh, you get when you uh, subscribe to the premium ed edition of Windy. So I'll turn that back on. And um, uh, below the uh, time, we get a, a little weather icon kind of showing us what the, the conditions uh, should be looking like. Right now, I should have uh, mostly cloudy with some peaks of sun. That has been going on uh, off and on throughout the morning. And uh, we can see also up here on the on the map that um, the Hendersonville, uh, which is right next to Evansville, uh, Indiana, is definitely coming under uh, more intense cloudiness and uh, that is anticipated to uh, deepen as we go a little bit further into the day. Uh, below that we can see that the temperature is uh, right now somewhere between, well, right, right around 60. Looking at my outdoor thermometer, I'm seeing 61.5 degrees here, uh, just right outside Joy. Uh, and so uh, pretty close to uh, what, what uh, we can see here. Might get some peaks of sun later. It's going to get a little bit warmer today, but the wind is quite uh, strong today. So uh, um, I'll get to the wind here in just a second. Uh, just before we get to the wind and just below the temperatures, you can see that there is an indication of precipitation. And this is in particular uh, the rain rate, uh, could be snow rate as well if you're, if you're getting snow, uh, but this is more of a precipitation rate uh, rather than uh, anything else. So this would be the per hour uh, precipitation rate. And it uh, looks like we're clear for the rest of the day. I'm not going to be in, in rain here in uh, Henderson for uh, the rest of the day. Uh, that may change tomorrow. Uh, I will be actually leaving um, this state park in Henderson, Kentucky on Wednesday morning. And uh, I've already kind of scoped all of this out, so I'm just kind of going back and reviewing what I've already looked at with you so that you can kind of get a feel for how I deal with weather awareness. Below the precipitation uh, portion of the weather strip here is the wind. And you can see that uh, the wind is blowing quite strongly here uh, at uh, 16 to 17 miles per hour. And below the uh, green part of the strip is a is the uh, wind gust strip, uh, a little bit smaller in height and uh, a little smaller in font. And uh, but you can see that uh, the wind gusts are uh, up in the 30s, uh, 30 mile per hour uh, range. So very gusty day today, very windy day, just surface winds are quite strong. And uh, I've definitely felt that uh, when I've uh, exited the, uh, the van and uh, kind of walked around the park a little bit. So, and uh, below the uh, wind, uh, the surface winds and the uh, wind gusts, we get the direction. So right now the winds are out of the uh, southeast going uh, uh, northwest. So that's um, what we have for uh, the wind today. I'm going to close the weather strip though and then just start focusing a little bit more on the maps. Um, and I want to show you over here on the right hand side as well that there is a quick menu with a number of different views on the weather that you can select. And this is a configurable uh, quick menu. There are many, many, many more layers to this map that you can select if you'd like. And if you find yourself using a particular layer uh, quite a bit, you can add it to this uh, quick menu over here. Again, I'm showing the satellite view, but I can switch very easily to the weather radar view just by clicking here. And uh, I'll zoom out a little bit just to take a look at the entirety of the United States. And you can see that we've definitely got a strong weather system uh, in the entire central of the United States. 
And that, of course, is going to be moving uh, eastbound and uh, kind of northeast bound, I think, is the way that's actually going to play out. But it's definitely going to cross my position here down in, conduct, in Kentucky uh, over the next uh, 24 to 36 hours. So we'll look at that as we go. And uh, this is a kind of a live view of the weather. I'm not seeing any, yeah, there's a flash of lightning down there. You might have noticed that uh, whenever there's a lightning flash, you'll see it flash uh, on the radar. And uh, if you zoom way in, you can actually even see, um, if you get the right one, yeah, there it is. You can actually see the sound front as it uh, uh, emanates away from the actual uh, center of the uh, lightning strike area. So that's pretty cool. If you have sound, it makes kind of a little clicking noise. Uh, whenever there's a lightning strike, it's it's kind of cute. I, I like it. I enjoy it quite a bit. Um, don't have the sound on for you uh, today for that. I didn't want any distractions like that. Anywho, so my travel path back to Wisconsin will be up through Indiana until I cut over to Kankakee, Illinois for a stay uh, probably at a Walmart there. Well, I know it's going to be at a Walmart and I know also I'm going to be staying at a Walmart at uh, Terre Haute, Indiana. So I'll show you how to add a favorite uh, for that location. And then uh, once I cross into Illinois, it's going to be kind of, or once I leave Kankakee, actually, it's going to be kind of a straight shot up to the Madison, Wisconsin area. So um, to add a favorite, uh, since I will be going through Kankakee, or through uh, Terre Haute, I can uh, zoom in until I can find Terre Haute, click on it, and then up here in the search bar, it's filled Terre Haute, Indiana in here. I can just click the heart and say add to favorites and now it gets a little heart um, bubble on the map and so I will know that I've been there and by the way you can kind of see that I've favorited a whole bunch of places this actually represents my journey since last September I've been to all of these areas and then kind of swung down through Tennessee and headed down over to Texas. Some of these are from last winter, but um, some of these are also from the winter that we're currently uh, concluding. And uh, so then I took a easterly trek across the Gulf Coast states and down into Florida and then circled back up through Georgia over to Alabama. Huntsville was my very last video before this one and then I stopped uh, up here at Old Stone Fort in Tennessee and then came on up here to uh, John James Audubon State Park in Henderson, Kentucky. So that's how we add favorites and it's kind of uh, given me an uh, interesting new way to uh, track my progress as I visit uh, many of the United States. Okay, so uh, let me close the weather strip again down here and go back here to, um, I didn't really need to go back there. Um, and then I, let's just take a look over here at the uh, menu here just to see what I've got on the uh, quick menu uh, as it stands. Uh, I've got uh, weather radar, which we're looking at now. You saw satellite before. One thing I want to point out about the satellite is that presently we're showing the, uh, the blue version of the map. But you can switch to visible, and that gives an interesting representation of the layering of the clouds. Uh, this is visible, so the uh, more amber-colored clouds are at uh, lower levels and are not uh, apparently being as lit up by the sun as the, uh, as the upper layers of the clouds. So that's really kind of cool, and it looks very, very cool when you're uh, in uh, early morning hours or in the, uh, in the evening hours as the sun is setting. Uh, there's a three-dimensionality that comes out of the clouds uh, at, that, at those periods of the day. Uh, that make looking at the uh, visible maps uh, really very cool. You can also switch to infrared if you would like and that will kind of give you uh, an indication of kind of a heat map kind of look at the clouds. 
I'll just uh, return to visible for us and just kind of go from there. Uh, but then uh, also you can check the winds. So this is what the winds are looking like. And um, the blues are more calm uh, conditions. The uh, greens are getting windier and the uh, oranges and reds and violets are really windy. And uh, so as I move in here on, um, on the um, Henderson area here, in Kentucky, you can see that the winds are in the 20 mile an hour-ish range, right? If you look at the legend down here in the lower right-hand corner, you can kind of see, and, and the legends for all of these maps will be down here in the lower right-hand corner. Um, and so that's uh, what uh, it looks like for the winds. I can uh, look at uh, rain and thunder. Now this is unlike the uh, weather radar in that this layer you can move forward in time. The weather radar of course just basically stops at where you are in time. Uh, it does give you a little bit kind of a um, a, um, a morphed view of what conditions are now and the anticipated uh, motion of what you have currently, but it can't really uh, determine whether or not things are going to be um, mellowing out or intensifying. You just you don't really see that as much. But here on this particular view, the rain and thunder view, you can get a little bit more of a um, future view just by scrubbing the timeline forward. I'll do that for you in a moment. Continue to just look at some of these others. Precipita precipitation type is important as well because one thing that you may have noticed is on the weather radar, uh, all you're really seeing here is just the intensity of the weather system or the precipitation that's uh, in progress. You're not really seeing what type of precipitation it is. I might uh, assume that uh, up here by Thunder Bay it's probably snow and down here by St. Louis it's probably rain but I don't really have any way of telling that. But there is a different map layer called precipitation type that will show me that and sure enough up by Thunder Bay actually they're pretty close to wet snow uh, maybe even rain mixed with snow. Uh, but you can kind of tell here the transitions between snow and rain, blue being the rain, white being the snow, and then some of these other colors in between are, uh, you know, those zones where things are a little bit iffy. And so you definitely want to be uh, aware of those when you're traveling and driving, right? That's uh, kind of important. So precipitation type uh, will let you know what you're actually driving into. Um, temperature is another uh, really important one that I look at quite a bit uh, just to see how warm is it going to be. Is there a cold front coming at me? Uh, that kind of thing. Currently the eastern half of the United States uh, with the exception of maybe northern uh, Maine and a little bit of New York and New Hampshire, Vermont uh, are um, uh, pretty warm. Uh, once you get uh, out to the um, uh, Northern Great Plains, uh, the Dakotas and Wyoming and uh, Montana were starting to get into the cold. My guess is that that will be sweeping east, so we'll find out if that's true as well. I can check humidity, and uh, here uh, the bluer colors are more humid, and the uh, yellows, uh, greens, uh, yellows and reds are more uh, dry. Uh, we can check the UV index um, and see, you know, where there's uh, bright sunshine coming through. And of course, we can also check the barometric pressure. Uh, blues are low pressure, and you can kind of see a center of circulation right here just by looking at the winds. Uh, so that would tell you, since it's a counterclockwise circulation, that would tell you that's a low pressure system. And then the, uh, the uh, yellows and reds are um, trending towards the higher pressure areas. So let's take a look at what I'm driving through. And this has uh, shaped my uh, departure from uh, Kentucky, as a matter of fact, as I did look at this a couple of days ago, and we'll see whether or not everything is playing out as expected. 
Uh, and that is that I did see that there was definitely some rain coming through on Tuesday. And uh, I had originally planned to leave this state park today. So I would have been uh, uh, definitely uh, in the final uh, stages of preparing to depart right now uh, as we're coming up on 1130. And uh, checkout time here at this park is uh, 1 p.m. Check-in time is 2 p.m. So, uh, however, uh, seeing the weather coming at me uh, in, uh, on Monday and Tuesday, uh, I decided to go ahead and extend my stay here at this park, which is pretty barren right now. We had uh, uh, quite a, f a few additional campers that uh, arrived for the weekend that's just passed. Uh, and so that was good to see. Um, I'm sure the park appreciates uh, being a little bit more full than they uh, are during the week here. But I think, too, this is uh, getting uh, further north. And uh, the further north you go, probably the less the um, desire to be out camping uh, can be. Uh, the, the fair weather campers are kind of um, nowhere to be seen right now, right? So as I look around outside the campsite right now, many people uh, left yesterday afternoon or this morning and, and are already gone. Okay, so uh, first I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna take a look at the rain and thunder uh, layer of the map and just uh, let's track what's going on here. Again, I'm here in Kentucky. You can see where my mouse is circling and I need to get up here uh, into Wisconsin so it's and it's up through Indiana and then a diagonal up to uh, the Madison Wisconsin area so let's see what's going to happen as I grab this uh, scrubber bar here and pull it forward in time I can go back in time if I want this is really kind of uh, what what has happened already today and you might notice that there's a little bit of rain here None of this seems to have hit the ground. If it did, it might have been a drop or two, but I didn't notice anything. Um, and uh, so then we'll just kind of get up to the present time. So this is what it looks like right now. And then we'll just start scrubbing forward. And that uh, line down here is a little bit concerning. Obviously, we've got some heavy uh, activity going on in here. Um, showing down here in the um, on the legend uh, upwards of uh, 1.2 inches per hour that's a pretty strong uh, line of storms so let's see if that actually comes through the Henderson area here in Kentucky so I'll continue to drag this forward in time and uh, yeah looks like we're gonna get hit oh but look it's starting to weaken and fade as it uh, comes through this area. So that's good to see. And right now I'm uh, at 6 a.m. Tuesday morning. So tomorrow morning, this is about what I should be expecting. I should be expecting that the rains are just about done. Uh, so the bulk of the rain will be overnight while I'm sleeping. And um, then we'll continue to scrub forward. And um, Again, I won't be leaving until Wednesday morning, so as we continue through Tuesday, uh, everything is clearing out, right? Uh, this is Tuesday at 9 p.m., and the road to Wisconsin is clear. Uh, so I'll continue to uh, scrub on through uh, to Wednesday. Now, I will be staying Wednesday night in Terre Haute, Thursday night in Kankakee, so here we are into Thursday now, and I'm still not seeing anything coming at me. Winds may be changing direction, but uh, that's not uh, necessarily a problem. And then I do anticipate arriving in Wisconsin on Friday, but uh-oh, here's a little bit of rain coming through Wisconsin, and um, I'm wondering if I'm going to hit that. Well, it's actually 2 a.m. that this uh, line of uh, rain is going to be coming through. And so let's see. By, looks like, looks like by 9 a.m. that is uh, cleared off and we're, and I'm good to go. 
Uh, and so if I leave after nine from uh, Kankakee, I'll have a clear drive and let's just check the rest of the day Friday just to see if anything else develops and it doesn't look like it. So I'm good. And it looks like maybe on Saturday, some additional stuff's going to be coming at me. All right, I'm uh, back and I um, needed to step away for a moment just to blow my nose. Uh, I do have tree allergies and um, down here in Kentucky, all of the trees are budding out. Uh, there is a tremendous amount of tree uh, leaf debris uh, on the uh, ground here. Right now I've been kind of hearing occasional uh, uh, pollen pods that are dropping out of the trees uh, hitting the top of the van uh, and, and it's just littered all over the, uh, the grounds here. Uh, it's not really bad for me right now, but I don't think that uh, the types of trees that are here in the park are ones that uh, really uh, irritate me, but um, a little bit. And uh, it's, this is very early for me. This is the end of March, and um, I'm usually not expecting to be in uh, full-on allergy season until late April, early May uh, up in Wisconsin. So it's interesting how uh, the... Um, uh, uh, the seasons are, uh, are, are, are very much different, even though you're maybe only about one state away. Uh, all I need to do is uh, drive up, uh, you know, f through Illinois and I'm, I'm into Wisconsin again. But, um, yeah, it just seems like, um, there's, qu there's quite a bit of, uh, variability in the seasons in terms of its timing. But anyway, so uh, that's pretty much the, um, the idea of how I uh, just check and see what uh, kind of precipitation I'm looking at. I don't like driving through rain. Uh, I don't mind it. I've done it uh, many times. It just, sometimes it just happens and you can't always avoid it. Uh, but um, it is what it is. Uh, but uh, to the extent that you might be able to uh, delay travel in order to allow a storm system to, to pass you by, uh, that might be uh, desirable, or uh, maybe you need to flee from uh, uh, severe weather that is predicted. So uh, it's always uh, weather awareness. I think is is really so important. Now let's go ahead and go back to right now, and then I just want to switch over to the temperature and let's see what I'm looking at for temperatures as I move my way uh, up into Wisconsin. So from right now, uh, we're going uh, forward in time, 5 p.m., 6 p.m., going overnight, and it's looking like it's staying pretty warm. That's interesting. The temperatures aren't really uh, changing much, but it's interesting to watch this uh, colder uh, area start creeping eastward. I might have to take back what I said earlier about uh, maybe the trees here not really uh, affecting me all that much because right now it's like my nose is uh, actually quite runny. Um, sorry. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, so we're, we're, we're seeing this, uh, this cold front uh, coming, uh, uh, inching closer to uh, Wisconsin. And uh, so, uh, but it's, it's Tuesday, let's see, uh, Tuesday 7 a.m. So we'll go through Tuesday it warms up a little bit. Actually, it's cooling down in Wisconsin. You can kind of see that it's going a little bit more green. And then as Wednesday night approaches, oh, look at that. So this is going to be the freezing line, right? As we transition from the greens uh, to the blues, you can see on the legend down here, we're actually getting into uh, below freezing in the uh, darker blue uh, zones uh, and uh, definitely below freezing up here in the in the uh, lighter blue areas. 28 uh, degrees in Elroy at 11 p.m. tomorrow night. So, and I'll just keep running forward. And um, looks like by uh, 4 a.m., 7 a.m. Uh, okay, it starts retreating after 7 a.m. So, um, yeah, in, uh, in the Madison area, 26 degrees. So, and I will be down here so Wednesday, uh, I will still be here. 
Uh, actually, I'll be leaving here uh, Wednesday morning. So, and down here in Evansville or uh, uh, Henderson uh, at the uh, state park, still mild. So that's nice to see. And uh, let's continue to scrub forward then. Uh, so Wednesday, um, Wednesday night. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, the cold is definitely creeping in. Uh, and uh, here in uh, Terre Haute, looks like I will be uh, uh, putting up with uh, some, some freezing temperatures. Let's zoom in here. Yeah, Terre, Terre Haute right at 32 at 6 a.m. Does it go any lower? Uh, doesn't look to be. No, it starts warming up. So uh, it looks like I'll be grazing the freezing mark uh, in Terre Haute uh, uh, on uh, Thursday morning. Thursday morning I will continue up through uh, Indiana and then cut over to Kankakee, Illinois. The reason I'm doing, I'm staying in uh, Indiana is uh, if, I, if I need gas, and I probably will gas up before leaving Indiana. Illinois is one of those states where gas prices are quite a bit higher than the rest of the nation. So Indiana, probably my uh, best uh, place to, uh, to stay until, uh, until I can't avoid it. And uh, actually, if I fill up here uh, in Indiana, before hitting Kankakee, I can get into Wisconsin without needing to refill in uh, Illinois at all. So that, that will be good. Okay, so continuing on through Thursday. So Thursday night, what have we got? Um, here we come into, and it, it actually gets pretty warm uh, near 60 in uh, during the daytime. So that's uh, comfortable. And, um, and then uh, overnight as we approach Friday morning, what do we got? A little bit of freezing temperatures coming, but look at that. It warms right back up. So looks to me like, uh, and even up in the Madison area, we're staying above freezing uh, at around 7 a.m., which seems to be, uh, I've noticed, the uh, cool part of the night as we, you know, come out and rebound and start heading back up hill with the, with the temperature uh, uh, gradients. Um, so that... Uh, 7, 7 a.m. seems to be where it kind of bottoms out and starts heading the other direction. Okay, so uh, that's uh, how that uh, looks for uh, temperatures. I, I am interested in how windy it will be, so I will check wind. I've got a fairly high-profile vehicle, a uh, Ford Transit. 350 HD is the largest Transit made, and uh, it... Um, it does definitely catch the wind. You can feel the wind uh, tugging at you or pushing you or whatever. And uh, so uh, we'll kind of flip back here to uh, present time. I'm actually not going to be leaving until Wednesday morning, so I'll scrub forward until Wednesday. And uh, so Wednesday is going to be around, I uh, probably won't leave until 9 or 10, so we'll probably we'll assume 10. And uh, so it's relatively calm here. But I will be driving into increasing winds, it looks like. So Terre Haute has got a slightly windier uh, situation going on at that point in time. Let's see what happens as we go through the day. Oh, it looks like it's going to actually calm down a little bit. So that's nice. That probably is what's going to allow the uh, temperatures to drop at night, right? So yeah, it definitely uh, calms down overnight. And then Thursday, as I head towards uh, Kankakee, uh, definitely gets windier up there by 11 a.m. up by Kankakee. Is that going to be the trend? Oh yeah, it's getting way windier. So that will be a little bit annoying uh, driving through that. It'll be wind coming out of the west. I will be heading kind of more north until I kind of cut across to Kankakee. And uh, the wind will be coming out of the west, which means I'm going to get uh, pushed on the uh, driver's side of the vehicle. Uh, as I'm driving up through this area. Uh, I was so hoping to do this video in just one take. And, uh, <laughs> but here I am having to uh, get up and uh, blow my nose uh, because I guess the trees are 
actually doing a bit of a number on me. All right, uh, moving forward then uh, to uh, Friday. Yeah, it looks like uh, things are going to calm down overnight here, Thursday into Friday. Let's see if the winds peck back up on Friday. No, it looks like it's staying fairly calm. Uh, well, uh, I don't know. I'll you know by noonish I should be you know somewhere in this vicinity, kind of approaching the uh, Wisconsin Illinois border, so uh, should be fine. And then uh, later on, <laughs> interesting little. Uh, this river of calm <laughs> through the Madison area. So that's interesting. Um, and then it definitely calms down a little bit uh, uh, in the evening. And uh, who knows uh, what's going to happen going forward. I'll be in place in Wisconsin by then, so uh, not going to be much of a factor. So that's, uh, and let's see, is there anything else that I would be really interested in? Um... Well, certainly precipitation type might be important to me if there was going to be precipitation. But as, as I mentioned, I've kind of planned uh, the final leg of my return to Wisconsin in such a way as to avoid precipitation. So we shouldn't really see anything here at all. Um, there was that uh, Friday morning precipitation that was going to hit Wisconsin. That was overnight. Yeah, there it is right there. And... Uh, Looks like oh, it's uh, kind of uh, on the on the fringe, right? Rain with snow is what the legend's telling me, but mainly rain. It looks like there could be some freezing rain uh, right in the Madison area uh, at uh, at midnight, midnight Friday morning. But that seems to move off pretty quickly, and by the time we get into the afternoon, we'll just switch over to temperature. Yeah, it's definitely going to be warming up well above freezing, so shouldn't really be a factor. And then look at that uh, nice warmth coming up into Wisconsin uh, for Friday afternoon. Um, 50s, I guess. So uh, that's kind of the story of how I take a look at and be aware of what weather is coming at me. And um, so I hope you found that interesting. Now, do I use uh, Windy in a vacuum? Uh, as in, is that my only way of looking at it? No, it's not. Uh, I can show you a couple of other things that I uh, kind of be um, aware of uh, uh, and uh, watch. And um, those are a few um, uh, YouTube channels that uh, talk about the weather. There's a lot of great amateur weather stuff going on on the on the on the uh, on the YouTube. So uh, let's take a look at that. If I open up my uh, sidebar, I'm using um, Microsoft Edge, and uh, so that's uh, I it, that gives me the ability to do a sidebar. Um, tab situation instead of uh, across the top like most browsers do it and I kind of like this over here all of all of my pinned websites are up in this area uh, above the uh, thin uh, gray line here and then all of the other things that I've been you know um, browsing on the internet uh, show up below that as the individual pages that I'm looking at um, and I am presently on this windy tab and uh, so that's uh, where that is. Again, you can get an app uh, for your phone, and it's got great, if you're on uh, Android, I, I don't know how it is on iPhone. Sorry, I just don't have one. Uh, but they have uh, some great um, widgets that you can uh, use to show the radar right on your home screen if you want. So that's really pretty cool. Um, but uh, these are three websites that I have in the past looked at and continue to kind of use as uh, a kind of a longer term um, look at uh, what's going on in the weather coming up. So the first is uh, Ryan Hall, y'all. Uh, he has uh, a couple of channels. This happens to be the Ryan Hall, y'all extra channel. And he seems to post a lot here about just regular forecasts, but you might also want to just check out his um, 
regular channel by taking off the extras in your uh, YouTube search of uh, Ryan Hall, y'all. So he's a good, uh, uh, a good one. Um, Pow Ponder on Weather is another one that I uh, have uh, watched quite a bit. Um, Ponder is apparently this guy's uh, last name, so uh, Pow Ponder on Weather, and of course Pow stands for Ponder on Weather, so it's kind of redundant. Pow Ponder on Weather, but it's apparently his name, and uh, but it's a kind of a you know. We're going to ponder about the weather, right? So it's you know, kind of a clever spin on uh, words and names and whatnot. But um, yeah, he's got um, he's got a good channel. And another guy here uh, has a, a, a channel called Weather on the Go, and that also is a real good uh, channel to just take a look at uh, what's coming up in the uh, upcoming weeks maybe a little bit longer term than uh, windy will show you. I can get out to uh, 10 or 11 days on windy. Again, that's kind of a premium feature. I don't know where it stops, maybe seven days on uh, the non-premium version. Believe me, the non-premium version is definitely worth uh, your investigation. If you really like it and you would love to get those one hour forecast intervals, uh, or the ability to favorite an unlimited number of locations. So, you know, you saw all my dots or my fav my little hearts all over the place uh, here. That's one of the features of premium. I think you can only heart uh, maybe a limited number, maybe only one. I don't remember what the, the deal is with that. But um, so you could go premium if you wanted, but definitely check out the free edition. Uh, another very good reason to uh, go ahead and pop for premium is that it does support the developers, right? And they have been improving Windy uh, over the months, uh, over the last couple of, you know, the year and a half that I've been uh, out on the road, it's it's gotten better. So it's, it's really very cool to watch um, Windy evolve. And get better and, um, and and be my primary uh, way of looking at weather. But again, Ryan Hall, y'all, Paul Ponder on weather and uh, weather on the go are three excellent YouTube web channels that you can get uh, really solid weather information from. Uh, now, Ryan, a uh, little bit of a marketer. I think he's got um, uh, a lot of merch, and he's going to uh, try and sell you some merch. Uh, I think that also his videos may be sponsored. Um, not sure. I think Pow Ponder on Weather 2 has been getting a little bit more on the... Um, sponsored video side i think i don't know whether or not weather on the go has gone there or not uh with pal ponder on weather and weather on the go there's a built-in drinking game if you're into that whenever either of these guys says the word time frame drink believe me you will be drunk before the end of their 10 to 15 minute video <laughs> maybe in saying this uh, it will bring awareness to these guys that they're maybe overusing the word a little bit during that time frame. Heading into your April 1st time frame as we go through the late week time frame. By the time we get into your Thursday time frame, because uh, they use it in places where it's just completely unnecessary. Uh, sorry, I'm being too critical. They're great channels. Go check them out. Okay. So uh, that's pretty much the situation with weather awareness for nomads on the go or anyone who just wants to stay on top of the weather. Hope you enjoyed this, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Like and subscribe. Thanks. <laughs>